Ladies and gentlemen, this is Internet Personality Vangelis, and in the name of the Eternal Oath of Courage, I am here to dive deep into my most anticipated Soul of Jagokin release in years. Release code GX68 is the undying king of bravery, Gaugaigar, taking the almost finished 3G run in Super Robot Shogokin and kicking it off anew in Soul of Jagokin. The price is steep, the box is big, there is mucho styrofoam, and this review is about to begin. All mythologies of courage begin with a lion, and Galleon is the blanched mechanical top of the food chain that opens up the Chogokin Damashi Gaugagar experience. And his feline courage makes his feline body look 200% more feline than the DX original. Unfortunately, he's still not perfect. The rear legs make a valiant attempt but remain a little too beefy, and the tail is too short and mounted a little too high. Also, Galleon's upper body is still a little scrawny and could have used some more topside meat and muscle. Imperfections aside, I think this is the best looking high-end Galleon I've seen, still pulling off a great robot lion mode, if not THE robot lion mode. And the colors are awesome, from the two tones of facial and manial gold to the bronze claws and various other details. The metallic green eyes are piercing, and the silver fangs are a welcome sight after so many other attempts that left them gold. The Chogokin Factor starts off strong in Galleon alone, as he's got zinc content all over the place, from inner shoulder mechanisms to, well, whole chunks of the legs. This Space Lion's got some weight. This is a new robot lion, and he looks sleeker, but is he any more poseable than the old one? Yes, in several respects. Uh, his, well, his legs do the same thing where they can go forwards and backwards. Um, and I, I swatted his robot mane down, I didn't mean to do that. Sorry, Galleon. Uh, these are on, like, very clickety tight joints, uh, which means that there's not much uh, limitation for forward and backward axes and go out as well, uh, with this thing following in tow. Uh, there is a bicep swivel, there is a double jointed uh, elbow on the front paw. Uh, the whole claw can also rock around it pretty much from here to here. You gotta try to keep this thing uh, tied in down there, and someone outside is real excited about robot lions. And then there is a tilt on the paw here. It's not the whole paw, it's really just the front toe area, but it can help a bit if you get this guy, like, posed and looking like he's gonna snarl and strike. Uh, it gets, it gets the front parts flat down to the ground, and that helps quite a bit. The mouth can open and close quite happily. Uh, the head is on a connection that allows it just a little bit of wiggle, not enough to really look left and right, unfortunately. He can look up a little bit. Uh, if you look up just a little bit, it doesn't look too bad, especially since you can kind of cover things up with his, his chin flap here, but the farther up you go, the more that it looks like he's just starting to transform. So don't get too crazy with that, yo. There is a waist swivel, uh, and it's not ratcheted, it's quite free-flowing. You can have him do a cyclone paw attack if you want, which looks kind of weird. His tail can waggle, uh, on a separate chunk here out of the the big black backpack thing the butt pack then it moves here as well and moves here so there are three different spots for it to, to get some of that flow and the whole butt pack can also move up all these different pieces can move independently of each other which is kind of cool given that these are sort of like jet booster things for uh, for galleon and then uh, the rear legs can go forwards and backwards about that much uh, rotate outwards about that much, or swing outwards about that much. Uh, there is a thigh swivel, and then there is a double jointed knee. And then these rear paws have got like a ball joint connection, so they can totally tilt as well. Um, and I believe, yeah, this can, uh, the toe can twiddle a little bit so he can get some of that, you know, when a cat's lying on its side and starts bunny kicking you. He can, he can sort of get some of that on. Galleon never did that, because Galleon is... Galleon is way too cool to do that, but if you are some kind of crazy person who wants to pose your Galleon bunny kicking and other such, uh, kitty nonsense, that is all well within, uh, the possibilities of your own personal reality. So Galleon's a pretty cool robot lion, and heading into FUSION provides a very similar experience to the old DX Galleon toy. What with the core qualities of the transformation still being very simple and easy to replicate from screen to plastic. Soul of Chogokin does refine the process and adds several small steps for the sake of aesthetic improvement, such as extending Gygar's shins. 
It is recommended, even in the paperwork, to open up one of the final fusion hinges and push Gygar's head out from underneath, and I highly suggest following that advice. Less fuss, less potential paint scratching. With the transformation complete, it's time to take a look at Soul of Chogokin Gygar! And oh, baby, this is a slick and sexy rendition of Guy and Galleon's fused form. His legs are still a little overbuilt, and his head is still a little small, both for the sake of Final Fusion, but it's way less pronounced on this high-end version. Soul of Chigokin Gygar wears his silhouette well, and has plenty of paint to pump up its surfaces and sculpting. This guy breaks up his sea of white incredibly well, from the gray fingers and bronzed claws that I wanted to see on the DX original, to smaller silver pockets of mechanical mush. Gygar's head sculpt is hardcore superb, and the paintwork is wonderful right down to the black space around his eyes. The G-Stone's also pumped up with some clear green plastic to give it a touch of ambient glow. Thanks to an extra swivel joint, SOC Gygar can pull off a really convincing Gygar claw attack. Gives him another one-up on the DX version. Also, his hands have got a ball-jointed thumb and two-component Sochok Henshin-style finger articulation. They're the traditional Soul of Chigokin perfect transformation option parts, and as with many converting SOC sets, there are swappable anime-accurate fists that are a bit larger and nicer to look at. The wrist-based ball joint is a solid joy to pop things on and off of, too. The ball's metal and the sockets are durable and flexible. There are also some flourished open hands as a second display option, which allow for a number of agile gestures. The third set of non-transformation friendly hands are splayed out and ready to show some palm, for when you want Gygar to just tell that Zonder to friggin' STOP, man! The head's attached by its own sturdy metal-sphered ball joint, and the face can pop out to swap in a shouting alternate sculpt. Gygar does shout a lot in general, so this is a logical additional piece to throw in. And hey, let's pause and count up just how many option parts were included for Gygar alone. He's a transforming lion robot that includes three extra pairs of display-friendly hands and an additional face option. We haven't even cracked into the other three vehicles in the GX68 box. I am very happy to see that Bandai wanted this guy to be as fully featured as possible on his own. There's a ball-jointed neck up here, it lets him look left and right, but this is all the nod, and this is all the tilt, because a lot of the stuff around his head, including his little, like, robot mullet back here, gets in the way of those, like, additional axes movements. That's a bit of a bummer, it mostly means that his head can, like, look left and right unimpeded by all that stuff, because you can tilt it and nod it ever so slightly out of the way of, you know, the base of his chest. Uh, his shoulders are big, really clicky, and incredibly tight ratchet joints to the point where, like, this area moves fine, but as you go higher and higher, it gets really hard to move them. Uh, on the bright side, you, you don't really need to get them much higher than this, but getting it up here is really tough, and I don't know if that's, like, a, just a factor of the spring, or maybe the spring is coiled around something inside there. Uh, it doesn't feel fragile, it just feels, like, really meaty, and, like, almost cementy. Uh, he also got a detented outward shoulder movement, and then there's this big flap to get out of the way so you can have the the look that you want when he's uh, standing still and then still get this range. It kind of flows, but kind of doesn't. Not sure how I feel about it. There is a bicep swivel, a uh, double-jointed elbow, which lets you get all nice and tight uh, here on the screen. And then uh, his wrists are interesting, because there is a ball joint uh, connecting any hand. I've got his... Uh, display fists on right now. The cool thing about this is that, aside from giving you a nice uh, wobbly, ovular, ball-jointed range, it's connected to a disc, because uh, as, as you saw earlier, is a metal ball joint. It's on a metal disc, which can independently swivel around, giving you an extra little bit whoops, of uh, range, primarily for when you want him to have, like, you know, if he's going to be having an open palm and going like, hey, stop! Uh, it's a lot more doable this way. So that's pretty neat. There's also a little joint inside the shoulder here that allows you to wiggle his arm forwards and backwards. Uh, it's very slight, but still a little bit helpful. And it's cool that it's in there. His waist can turn left and right. There is no ab joint, and trust me, you'll see there's no room for one in there. His uh, little back butt plate is in three sections that can all move slightly independently, but Mostly just the middle part, because these two bits will bang against it, but it can get out of the way, which is helpful. Because he's got big, metal, detented hip joints. And they go about that far forward, 
about that far back, and they are tight, much like his shoulders. Uh, they're load-bearing, so it's good to see that. Also, they can detent outwards about that far. So he can't quite do the splits, but he can get close. Uh, his knees... Oh, also, there's a thigh swivel, and it's a big one. Check it. Anyway, his knees... They're a bit of a bummer, because they look double-jointed, don't they? Because they were for lion mode. In robot mode, they bend back like that, and then like that. This is as far back as that lower part goes. It doesn't bend any farther back. And I don't really get why, because when he's Gaugagar, like this whole piece, you know, it's everything from here down is inside the boots. And this thing can move forward this far. I don't understand why I can't move any farther back, and I'm, it's a little disappointing, because Gygar is a real lithe, thin guy, and it would be nice if he could curl his knee all the way up. Nonetheless, the ankles are on straight-up ball socket joints, and there is a little bit of a toe joint here for toe. Uh, the only bummer about his ankles is that everything in this guy, right, it's real ratchety, real tough, his ankles are not. Uh, they are actually a little bit loose, and it's easy for him to kind of waggle around fulcruming on those ankles. Uh, if you just have him in, like, wide-legged, you know, solid stances, it's usually, well, it's usually okay. But when you try to get creative or have him in more of a hero stance with his legs arched back a little bit, it can get kind of tricky, and uh, it's a shame. Um, I think that they're fine as ball socket joints, they just, they aren't as tight as I'd like them to have been. And I don't know if they're just plastic on plastic, they certainly feel like it. Uh, Would have been cool if they were, like, I don't know, metal ball and flexible socket with a bit more grip. Nonetheless, SOC Gygar, he's pretty poseable. Oh, also, his, uh, his chest can talk. Why not? Every Goken Galleon's got his Goken Gao machines, and I always like to start off with the die-cast drill and drill tank, Drill Gao. This is still a drill tank, and this version has got actual paint apps, way more angles, and a shinier finish than the DX original, though there's no vac metal chrome on the drills this time, and I'm okay with that. There are clear cockpit windows and copious die-cast content instead, and while there are no more rolling wheels, there are legitimate hard plastic treads. These are amazingly fun and add an intense high-end feel. You'll need a fairly grippy surface for them to catch onto if you want Drill Gal actually play rolling across the table, so they're more for adult collector style finger dragon than kitty play. But I still love them. If you split Drill Gal, you can also do the old Gygar drill knuckle boxing gloves thing using a wrist clip this time around. It looks bombastic, but is functionally useless without a support stand of some kind. The die-cast loaded drill gal pieces are way too heavy for Gygar's arm joints and will win the gravitational fight more often than not. Chogokin Liner Gao sports some internal die-cast pepperings, full paint apps, clear cockpit windows, no screws on the other side, and a central turning joint, which doesn't allow for a whole ton of turning. Oh well. It's a thick and dense little stick of Shinkansen with rolling wheels aplenty. Chogokin Stealth Gao quite possibly has no actual Chogokin inside of it, but it does have a flight stand and a goddamn sexy matte black finish, which contrasts beautifully against all of the metallic red paint applications. There's yet another clear cockpit window too, though it's admittedly hard to notice right away due to the color scheme. And like, man, the little 3G symbol is raised, sculpted, and picked out in gold. Mm. Stealth Gao has some deployable clamps on its underbelly to allow it to carry Liner Gao, which forms a solid clipped connection but sadly loses the flight stand connectivity. And with the pair of swappable stand adapter parts this set comes with, I'm a little surprised by that. You can also attach Stealth Gao to Gygar, which involves one of two optional support parts to connect to his back. However, simply folding back Gygar's shoulder spires and plugging them in forms a very solid connection. The support part is not entirely necessary. And the other swappable stand adapter allows you to prop this guy up when he's got the backpack on, which is helpful, though he is able to stand up with the thing by himself. But you're going to want that stand if you try to set up Soul of Jagokin SD Gygar, because... Holy crap, I like this Gygar, but he's not built to hold up all this stuff by himself. It's time to do the thing that I did on the day I got this toy. The thing I did to the tune of a very long looping version of a certain piece of music. In the style of Soul of Jagokin, let's... FINAL FUSION! And right off the bat, we're using a hidden lock to move Gygar's hips down into a better aesthetic position for Gal Gygar's body shape. 
There are a lot of these little tweaks throughout the combination, but just like the DX original, the general gestures and motions of the show's stock footage are the backbone of everything you're doing. This piece was created with clear knowledge of what most Galgagar fans hold dear, the soul of the final fusion sequence. But then stuff like this happens. Liner Gao goes in and triggers a switch to inflate Gygar's flanks to their proper Gygar size, then Gygar's neck locks it into place so the shoulder train pads don't slide around at all. It's also time for the other support part, which is there to help Stealth Gao stay connected, and like its sibling piece, is absolutely not necessary. It takes things from rock solid to concrete solid, and is easy to leave out if you want to avoid adding superfluous parts. But then, right as I say that, you have to ditch the vented caps on Galgagar's forearms. I'm kind of astounded that these are just pulled off and tossed aside, especially given how many other pieces are able to fold away. But I can almost forgive it when I get to the arm assemblies, and the fists actually spiral out! My glee is tempered by the fact that this often happens so fast or chunkily that I can't actually see it clearly take place, but what a fine little function to fit into this experience, regardless of the cleanliness of its execution. Similarly cool and similarly ridiculously hard to see, Galgagar's helmet actually has a tiny little G-stone get pushed into view in the forehead crest, complete with a tinier little sculpted letter G within its translucent plastic. And this is... GAL! Finally, the Chogokin hero we've been waiting for has been born. He is the soul of Chogokin, King of Braves. Soul of Chogokin, Gao Gai Gar. And yo, before we continue, these hands. They're fine. They have joints. But much like Gai Gar, they are perfect transformation hands, which swap out for a pair that look much more suitable and dynamic. And I'll get to these giant mitts later. Anyway, look, it's Gao Gai Gar. The boots, the legs, the torso, they look delightful. The Stealth Bomber backpack and the Shinkansen shoulder pads, though, they're stretched out horizontally a little too far, and it adds just a little too much of an unwieldy look from some angles. I believe this is all due to the nature of these things trying to both transform and look sleek in both modes, so I dig it. I guess I just wish Liner Gao's contribution could have been more mass shift magical somehow. The helmet sculpt is pretty sharp, with the aforementioned hyper-accurate G-Crystal and the use of Gygar's eyes as Gao Gygar's own optics. They don't come off nearly as sunken in as I had feared, but there is one big bummer and it is called the mouth plate. Bandai used a pearly white plastic that, more often than not, is just the wrong shade to catch any light in its sculpted details and ends up looking very flat half the time. I'm not sure if it needed a little silver, or instead some very slight panel lining in the jagged plate cracks, but it comes off looking a little cheap, especially in comparison to many of the other paint applications on this guy. But while it takes its liberties, Soul of Chogokin Gaugaigar is a big and beefy toy once he's fully assembled. He has spots of die cast in his shoulders and torso, and chunks of it in his feet and boots. He feels goddamn satisfying and solid in hand. The Galleon main editions tab in almost seamlessly, and mouth plate aside, the color work has an unquestionably premium sheen, with crisp borders between all the various finishes. Strangely akin to the original DX release, GX68 only includes one of Galgaigar's various tools. You'll need to remove, rotate, and reattach one of his arms to mount it, since it uses the same railing as Stealth Gao's booster racks. But the weapon comes in two pieces, and once combined, Galgaigar can equip the DIVIDING DRIVER! And this, this is a fully featured, fully painted, chrome-tipped, space-warping super tool. It looks fantastic and even features a quite possibly pointless spring-loaded compression point. Like, it's in the show, but you would only ever do this with your own fingers just because you can. You wouldn't push the thing into stuff, it's got a chrome tip. I can respect that. There is one other accessory for Gao Gaigar in this set, and it's a special conjoined set of hands. I'll talk about how flexible those huge display mittens are in just a few minutes, but if you arrange things just the right way, fold back a special pair of main flaps, and get the piece plugged into both of Gao Gaigar's wrists, you're ready to deliver some hell and heaven! Aim the boosters on Stealth Gao and open up the thruster vents, possibly while chanting to yourself, and you've got the pose that most any modern Gao Gaigar toy devotes part of its budget to pulling off. I'm just bummed that there's no Zonder core for him to hold on to afterwards. 
So when he's combined, Galgagar's head can turn left and right quite happily, even though that helmet is connected to his backpack because there's an assortment of joints and slider thingies that pretty much make it able to swivel around with no problem. However, it can't really tilt all that much. But if you pop the ball joint off of the arm connecting it to the backpack, then you regain access to Gygar's ball jointed neck, which is now Gal Gygar's ball jointed neck. It's a little bit limited, but it's got a touch of tilt and he can look all the way over to his left and right. Problem here is, as you can see, the helmet stays on, but it stays on a little bit raggedly, and it's easy to jostle around because it's locking around the top half of Gygar's head, not the bottom half. There's nothing hooking under his chin or under the back of his mullet, so that's kind of a bummer. Also, you got this big red thing sticking off here, but you can remove the entire, like, unpainted red part. It's just tricky, and then you end up with actual parts forming, and, I mean, there already is some, but I don't want to add more. Those little discs already bum me out. The shoulders uh, have got a big, sturdy, metal ratchety joint, and the Shin Kansen shoulder pad can move up and down to get out of the way of the uh, Stealth Bomber backpack so that you can have him, you know, hold his arm all the way forward, or even all the way up. There is an outward joint, but there are actually two of them. One of them is more for the transformation, uh, then the other one is from the transformation, but is also his legit outward motion. There's another joint here, uh, like, you know, behind this part of the main. It's supposed to be, like, joint up there, joint down here. But when you're playing with him, it's real easy to be moving that joint as well as this one, or just that joint, and then this one takes the shoulder pad with it, but stays still. And it just makes things feel a little bit, I guess, sloppy. Um, also, these things can push in and out. Uh, for, you know, transformation and aesthetic reasons. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's not bad, it just means that if you're like me and you need things to look perhaps a touch symmetrical now and then, or, or you're in a very certain sort of V-shaped dynamic, you gotta fiddle with them a bunch after posing them. The elbows are a legit bummer, though. It's, uh, just one joint, and that's not the bummer. Like, it bends 90 degrees. It's cool. The problem is where the elbow happens, because it's all the way up here. So, his arm goes from this to this, and then he has this gigantic forearm over here, and a much smaller bicep. Uh, I really wish that there had been some way to pull off what the SRC pulled off, which is to have the elbow joint mostly take place down here with like a cut through here, so this thing hinges as well, like the mounting area. I don't know if the nature of the cyclone reveal of the smaller hand means there's just no room for that in here. I feel like I could have sacrificed that for the sake of a, a nicer elbow placement, because this elbow placement, like, it looks fine every now and then, but then I'm, I'm messing around with him and it starts to look real funky, especially when his elbows are bent and he's trying to oppose like this. Swinging his bicep swivel, which I forgot to point out, he has one, causes this huge thing to move around and, and it looks very awkward to me a lot of the time. So uh, I, I would say the elbows are probably the weakest part of this, this whole toy as far as his, uh, Posability in combined mode. His waist would be one of the weakest parts, except it isn't with some modification. The stock instruction combination means it can only wiggle a little bit like this, left and right. That's because there's something bumping around between his arms. All you got to do is swivel the arms around so that the Gygar claws are facing outwards and thus going into the stealth bomber. Then there's a whole bunch more room back there, and you can get the waist to actually twist like, you know, not, not like 360, but you get this much out of it, as opposed to this much. Uh, when you're doing this, it is pretty easy to, because they are anchored to the stealth backpack, it's real tempting to, as I just did, grab the stealth backpack and wiggle stuff around. You're gonna start popping the main parts loose if you do that too much. The upside is, they do tab in real solid, so they don't fall out on their own. They only come out when you're posing this guy and you start messing with the struts that connect them to the backpack. Anyway, I don't get why the instructions have you arrange things such that the waist joint is limited. It has nothing to do with that support piece back there, and I guess we'll see as time goes on if I'm doing something that's legit messing up the toy. I'll keep checking, like maybe I'm scratching paint somewhere? Anyway, the hips and thigh swivels are uh, both the same as Gygar's, so the main thing to point out here is that the skirt can get out of the way like this, it can get out of the way like that, like that even. Uh, it's it's real good at keeping things free, and I said they were load-bearing. These hips are built for play. Like, they can hold up the huge die-cast meat of the uh, drill gow boots uh, in either direction. So that's fantastic. The knee joint is Gygar's upper knee joint, which means it only bends about this far. So it's uh, not really a 90-degree bend. 
but you can still BS some good, like, drill-tipped knee lifts. Um, the locks that keep the boots on, I find that this one locks on fine, but this one tends to come loose uh, when I'm posing them. There's a little switch back here that you release to get it to slide off, but uh, this thing, I, I'm able to, to kind of jiggle it out of there every now and then, so I don't know if that's just a problem with mine. It probably is because the other one feels fine. Talking about the ankles, these things are uh, big as well and load-bearing and good at what they do. They can go forwards and backwards. The toe can itself go up just a little bit on this transformation joint. And then you've got meaty ankle tilts that let you put them down like this and stay stable. Uh, they are lovely. Uh, and, and, and they are clicky. They have just enough tilt to get his legs wide. Feels great. So, uh, posability wise, Gao Geigar in the Soul of Jigoken package, he's not the be all end all. He's no replacements for Super Robot Shogokan Galgagar's opposable toy. The elbows are a bummer, but his biggest feature are these hands. Now as a fist, like, this looks really good. This looks almost like a sculpted fist. Uh, it's got that little arc there with the, the knuckles not all being, like, perfectly aligned. It's, it's that, that slight unevenness. It's got a nicely balled up thumb. Uh, the crazy part is this stuff all opens up. Uh, the way these joints work, each of these fingers... Uh, and they're all slightly separate lengths too, which I really like. They're all ball jointed to the knuckle, so they can splay out a little bit. And then there's a hinge there, and then a hinge and a hinge. That's a hinge, a hinge, and a hinge. Uh, and then if you want them to curl up real tight, the inside of the palm can slide up to allow for a little bit more uh, curl on the first knuckle hinge, so they can you know do the aforementioned fist thing. The thumb has got a hinge and a hinge, but then it's attached like the meaty part, like this part of the thumb is on its own ball socket joint and that's key like that's huge because if you want to do something like protect shade and you want to get all the uh, fingers together and you want to have the thumb kind of curled in tightly on that you can do that but then if you want him to give like a thumbs up you can get his fingers curled and then you can get this knuckle meat here like rotate it all the way up and out of the way it just makes for a, a better looking thumbs up speaking of protect shade there's something cool about the wrist there's a cutout here for a hinge, so you can actually get the wrist to go all the way up, and you can get, like, legit protect shade going on. Uh, makes me wish that there was an included effect piece to, like, go around this as a big, you know, wavy energy wall, but I can deal. Anyway, these hands, they are fantastic. Like, I maintain, these are some of the best, possibly still the best, posable hands on a toy uh, I've ever messed with. Matched only by the Armor Rodgers Bel Bellerophon and maybe KFC's Masterpiece Magnus hands, as far as things I've handled, anyway. Uh, the fact that they can curl up into a fist quickly and easily is unmatched. I've never had uh, posable hands look like a good fist that quickly. Usually I have to do a lot of futzing. And uh, they can look open and splayed pretty well. They can be, you know, snarling, grabbing stuff. The only problem with them is they're kind of big, and I think it's to fit everything, but as you can see here, from a frontal view, like, as a fist, they kind of, they can kind of pull it off because they ball up so well. They're just about the right shape. When they're open, like, that hand looks enormous compared to the size of his head. These are sticking somewhat to some line art, but the thing about Gaugaigar is in his show, his hands are really anime morphous and change shape a lot. I think that if it were physically possible, I would have liked these to be a smidge, like 10% smaller, just so they'd look better both fisty and open-y. But again, I don't know if that's physically possible. As it is, being a little too big is like their only fault. Uh, like, I don't expect them to fit into the turbines. It would be so cool if they could. Maybe for like, I don't know, a 2025 release. <laughs> but uh, yeah, these hands, they are an example to be followed. Uh, they are something that anyone making posable hands on a toy, especially a robot toy, they need to be looking at these and taking some friggin' notes. One last thing I almost forgot to mention is this little stick that you get with Gao Gao Gao. This is a tool. Uh, it's, it's thin on this end, wide on this end. This end, as you can see here, it's got kind of a, an angled slat to it, like you could wedge it on and pry things open. This side's got a little hook tip to it. This little tool is not really specifically for any one thing, it's just here as a multi-purpose thing to help you play with that toy and specifically if you're trying to get things untabbed or unclipped using this tool 
is lovely because if you don't have fingernails for it or you're worried you're gonna you know push something wrong on the toy and break something just use this little leverage thing and and you know pry things open get like the neck clip that's clipped down onto onto liner gal you can use this just wedge it in behind the neck plate pop it open uh, or this i don't know there is a tool use it if you want to keep it in mind if things get a little bit hairy Large-scale Soul of Chagokin sets are much more rare these days, and to see Gaugagar get this Rolls-Royce treatment puts an indelible warmth in my heart. It is a love letter to both Gaugagar and the show's dedicated fan base, and is easily the best transforming Gaugagar toy release I have ever handled. But with such a price tag comes greater scrutiny, and there are a few things I can't ignore. The assembled Gaugagar robot has posability that is notably limited by the nature of its shape and combination, and it lacks many of the clever ways that the Super Robot Shogokin version was able to get that articulation in there. And I feel like one or two of those tricks could have fit in here, particularly in the elbows. The combined toy suffers the most in its arms, with the biceps being a little too small and the posable hands feeling just a touch too large. It's also a shame that the helmet has such a wonky fit, mostly suffering for its brave attempt to properly use Gygar's eyes as Gaugygar's, and surprisingly suffering for its unpainted faceplate. All of these little problems can add up to an experience that I simply can't call an A plus 10 out of 10 as much as I'd like to, but this is the single greatest fully final fusion in Gaugygar set to ever come out, emerging from the ether to backhand CM's corporation's efforts into distant memory. It may not be perfect, but it is Excellent! Its Gygar is particularly superb. Its Gao machines are dense with moving parts, and its Stealth Gao especially tries really hard to execute upon some anime physics magic. Any Gao Gygar fan should try to track down a GX68 of their own, but don't pay a crazy markup for it if you can avoid it, especially since Bluefin was able to provide us with a North American release. I can't give you a price range that I would find comfortable, but if you're starting to get up to like, I don't know, $500? Bear in mind that this is not perfect. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Evangelist, and I want to thank you all for joining me in my celebration of two Milestone Gaugagar toys. Currently, it's Alpha and Omega. And for being a part of this whole video review experience as I clear review number 300, plus all the dash letter nonsense that messes with the count and puts it probably closer to 400, I'm getting close to my eighth year of doing this. So thank you for giving me the strength and the courage to never give up, to raise any percentage up to 100. Thank you all, in the name of the eternal vow of bravery. This will be the key to victory.